Before we get started, I did make a note in the last video, and I'm actually going to do it a little differently than what I did in that video, what I stated. I put them out in this order. As soon as Shark Bite came out, it says, when Shark Bite is revealed, he's uh, placed in the zone or revealed. If he does not occupy a water space, then you swap him. If none are occupied, you choose it choose which to place them in okay so I will simply move him to the first available C then I would keep going in order which meant the next hero to come out would have been jackknife there he's still in the air so it doesn't matter then the chameleon would be hiding there then we would go just like this which leaves toxin in a C space which is going to help us out and you'll see why as we play the game he is a deadly assassin and this will prevent us from attacking anywhere but C so we want to get these two um, he's actually a little bit easier to kill and you'll see why but I think now we're ready um, got everything reset got everything set up ready to go <coughs> and so let's jump into it. Player one will draw an event and we get a plot from the past. Venom steals dinosaur bones and kidnaps world-renowned biologist Daniel Peaks to recreate dinosaurs in a cloning device using a rapid growth serum. Using the dinosaurs, Venom could destroy Freedom Squadron and rule the world. However, the plan backfires and Venom's base is overrun by dinosaurs. So. During the tactical phase, any combat in an Arctic zone this round will lower the Venom Leader's uh, support by one. Well, we, we can't attack an Arctic region because of his global effect while he's in, while he's in play. So we don't have to worry about that. Nothing bad happened, although we missed out on a good event there. So. Let's look at the starting cards. I'll go ahead and show these, the difference in the commandos and the recruits. This is basically their worth, their value, their purchase, their experience. If you were to buy this card, that's what it's worth. This is their recruiting power, and this is their lead, combat leader effectiveness, and this is what they will offer in support. Um, if you notice, the commandos don't have as much recruit power as recruit as the recruits do because they're excited. They want to get their friends going, and you know they're excited to help out. While the commandos are veterans ready to retire, they don't have as much uh, purchase power or uh, cost, and they cannot be a leader, but they can still support and fight. So, add those up. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So for six, I think they're going to grab Inferno. Now, his uh, special ability, if during the tactic phase, you look at the top card, you can retire a, a card. We'll, we'll talk about that later, uh, later and add some more attack. But the main thing is, if he's the leader, you'll get four dice in combat. So that will immediately go into his discard pile, player one. And I'm sorry, uh, everything is, I'm trying to get everything on the screen, but uh, I can't really get the hands on the screen. So the way you do that is you actually play these. So let's say I play these down here to use those purchase power. Now I can choose if I want to try and attack. So let's just see what that would look like. Let's, let's try to uh, attack Toxin, because that is a C space. Oop, but I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. I even put a one there to remind me. As soon as the event's played, he triggers, and one, two, three players, we have to retire the top three cards. So we're going to lose a draw back. Sorry, a draw bridge. And, uh-oh, a uh, top side. And a general steal. I don't know. Okay. So we got that taken care of. This one just reminds me that before I do anything to remember, we must attack in the sea. So... Once again, um, they cannot be a leader, but that's okay. We'll let one of the commandos be a leader. 
leader attack value of two. So let's just put two dice there. And then we're going to send all of these in during the tactic phase. The tactic is where we plan to attack. So one, two, three, four. Four more dice coming in as support. And we are attacking Toxin. So let's take a look at his card. I mean, this is basically Storm Shadow, and you will see if you ever watched the cartoon. During the event phase, retire a number of cards from the recruitment deck. It would number of players. We did that. Discard all Venom support cards that drawn that are not Venom Scourges or Shadow Fangs. So he can only be supported by these two ninja type uh, units. Okay? That's why I said he seems a little bit weaker because he has only three health, four armor, gets four support, but you can only use those two specific cards. Then at the bottom, after defeating Toxin, if any cards remain in the reward deck, you reshuffle Toxin back into the Venom Leader deck. So just like in the cartoon, he always runs away at the end of the fight. Three health, we'll just track that right here, one, two, three. Four armor, one, two, three, four, and there's numbers on here, and you, it's hard to see with the camera, but uh, you can see the numbers, but you can actually see, the, see through those uh, chips on the board. Now, four Venom support, so we just draw the top card, and we get a Sea Serpent. This is a great card. You get uh, the Venom Leader would get uh, one extra health, and if you're in the sea, which he is, he'd get one extra armor. But Toxin cannot be supported by anything that's not those two specific cards. So there's one. Here's a Wasp. It's like a battle android trooper. You get one extra armor, and if you draw another Wasp, then you get an extra hit point thereafter. So there's two. Here's three. Venom Glider. Okay. And four, Cottonmouth. Now, this is a great uh, card to get rid of. Plus one health, plus one armor. Doesn't matter what uh, region you're fighting in. It always happens. But he says you must discard all Venom support cards that are not Venom Scourge or Shadow Fangs. These are not Venom Scourge or Shadow Fangs. So we must discard. Which means he will be uh, unsupported. So... Three health, four armor. Now let's see how combat works. Some of these cards will make you uh, reduce the number of dice you roll. We'll see that later, I'm sure. So let's give this a roll. Okay, we need a four. Here is a four, here is a four, and here is a four or higher. We got lucky. We barely did this. So one, two, three hit points in one attack phase. We did his hit points in attack phase in in uh, damage now remember his special ability we do not get to capture him just yet for his uh this would be his victory points he will go back into here we may even redraw him which i hope not but we got very lucky um he is uh a little bit easier with uh the support being specific like that so we got we got lucky we was able to get rid of him early on before he went through our deck very far so let's clean this up then let's see what reward we got from his base oh the hydro master mark 5.9 so there we go we got one of the items we need to complete this mission Created in the top secret military lab this device allows for the seeding of clouds to bring about rain when scientists were unable to control how much rain was produced, it was locked away. Now, if you see down there, it's got the manila folder. That means it is a mission-specific quest item, so that's good. Global effect. During the tactical phase, we can combat in the sea region and give our combat leader plus one leadership attack for three victory points. So... This is a one-time use if we choose to use it. And now I've always thought this is weird. It's worth three victory points whether you use the card or not. So why would you not use it, right? Um, I honestly think it should be three and one. Like if you use it, it's only worth one. But the victory points are only four in the multiplayer co-op. If you win, you get to add up your points and see who gets awarded uh, the hero of the war uh, by the UN. 
So not a huge deal in this case. We're playing solo. So we have that reward. Now we do the cleanup. So this will go here into the discard. Of course, it only has five cards left, so that'll be the next hand. Won't worry about that. We refill this. You only refill this at the end of the round. Actually, I think uh, I need to refill that first, but we'll go ahead and redo this. Oh, Bowser and Pit. So now there's a nice leader card, and uh, it's like Junkyard and Mutt. There we go. So now we reseed the Venom board. And who did we get? Strato. So you retire the top card from the recruitment deck. Now it does not say global. So that is only if you go to attack him the way I understand it. Just like um, Toxin said global effect. All right. If he's in the air, which he is not, he will get extra health and armor. Um if the uh, retired card you had had abilities but we don't have to worry about that so there we go that is during the tactical phase so i'll just put a three on there so i'll remember to look at that so if we go to attack him we want to make sure we're going to attack him because we're going to lose a card uh make sure we t wipe him out okay so that's it for player one's turn we go to player two real quick so one two three Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Recruiting power. Not quite enough for Bowser Pit. Not quite enough for the Peacemaker. Uh, but we have enough for Sundown. Do we want to get Sundown? So let's go ahead and get Sundown. He can be a leader as long as you do not use him in the recruitment phase. Because once he's used up, um, someone that uses a recruitment phase ability, they cannot be a leader. So if you use him, though... You, the card you purchase will go right on top of your draw deck. Then if you attack in the air and you let him go along and support, he will grab those cards for you. So that that's pretty cool. Alright. Now, do we want to try for him? Five health, he gets three support, and he can get supported by anything. So that would be two, three, four, five, six. All of those would have to be a success pretty much, and we haven't even drawn his three support cards. I just don't know if we've got enough. Hmm. Let's go ahead and do it just to show you what it's looking like, in case you're interested in how that works. So, the commando. One, two, three, four. Each one of these offers one support die. His health is five, and his armor is three, so that is where he will start right there. Then, first card. Okay, Komodo. Armor plus two. If it'll focus. There you go. Sorry about that. Armor plus two, one, two. So now we have to roll a five, and we still have two more cards to draw. The Constrictors. Reroll one successful combat die, and subtract one from the rolled value. All right, number three. Oh, there's those sea serpents I was telling you about. Plus one life, and since we're in the sea, plus one armor. So, plus one life, plus one armor. Now, we have to roll a six on every one of these dice. Every, every die must be a six to break his armor and do enough damage, so. Wow, I got a lot closer than I thought I would. That is ridiculous. Okay, so as you see, we did three damage. One, two, three. We have to pull back, call off the attack. So he will get to stay. So let's clean the board up. That will go in our discard pile. Five cards for the next hand. We clean this up. Reset this. Draw a new card. There's pow uh, Powder Keg. During the recruitment phase, you can draw two cards. But if you use that ability, then he, he cannot be the leader of a, an attack. Okay, so player three, moving right along. First few turns are going to go really quick, and you'll see. Two, four, six, 
seven, eight. Eight recruitment. Well, we have enough for Powder Keg if we wanted to go ahead and grab him. That might not be a bad idea, especially this early on, drawing those extra cards um, during the recruitment phase. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll pick him up. Right there you see the influence you need to recruit him is an eight. There we go. And he will provide us with two recruitment of his own. So yeah, we'll do that. And then, I think we're in the same situation. Two, three, four, five, six. I just don't think it's enough to take him out. And if Strato got one or two good support cards, we couldn't take him out either. So we're just going to end that turn. And that's it. That's the first round of the game. Let's just jump right into another round. Now, as I said, this commander token is just to remember who is first player, who will draw the event, but also, um, in some instances, if the villains get ahead of us, give each player an uh, equal number of turns in most cases. So, let's refill this. There's uplink. You discard a number of cards and draw one extra during the recruitment phase. All right, next event. Uh-oh, Venom Strikes. Venom's Sinister Plot advances. Move the event track up by one and see the mission for the effects. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, this is done. This goes here. So we move the event track up to the one. Simply get to your mission card. And right there on the one, Venom tests their weather dominator covering the world in blizzards. However, the prototype explodes, setting Venom's plans back. All zones are now Arctic. Now this is a bit of a bummer for us. Let me grab the manual and show you. Uh, as I was testing and trying to get through the rules. I wanted to make sure about this and it already came up. Here is an example in the book. Page 5. Okay? Right there. Example of event ability conflict. During a turn a player chooses to attack vipers. Now that's uh, one of the venom leaders like uh, the Baroness. In the venom mountain defense zone. Now her ability causes you to uh, draw like another card and put it into play. So the Sink, the Colorado, and the Red Rockets of Doom are revealed because each of these events affect zone types that do not cross over. They both take effect. So if you had two cards that affected uh, water regions like um, extra attack, extra defense, blah, blah, they just cancel each other out. But these do not. They both take a combined effect. So in this instance, until the next event phase, Combat may only occur in the sea and air. However, because Venom Mountain defense is an arctic zone, the combat instantly fails and the player must advance to the retirement phase. Now, what does that mean? Well, it really hurts us. So, she would make you draw an event card and the event card said you can only attack in the water region, but she was in the arctic region, the Venom Mountain, since she was here and you can only attack in water, the attack failed. Well, we understand that because we have Sharkbite here. And he said, while he is in play, combat may only occur in the sea. So we, we know that. We can only attack in the sea. But now, this card, they have frozen the entire globe and every region is an Arctic region. And that is a global effect. That is a global effect that will be in effect until we're told differently. And I had to double check on this, and if you read down here, later the ice will fall and all regions will be C. So it's not a one event card thing. That's going to happen. That's going to stay that way for a while, which means we cannot attack any Venom leader. So I am so glad, so glad we were able to get uh, player one to knock out Toxin because he would just sit there and keep assassinating our possible recruits until we were able to get the... Very lucky. Very, very lucky. So now we can just work on building up our decks. This is looking good. Because none of these have a global effect that is going to uh, harm us without trying to attack them. Okay? 
this is not a global I'm playing it since it doesn't say global so we just go straight to player one's turn so these turns are probably gonna go pretty quick we have two four six eight ten I have ten recruitment power let's grab the peacemaker and retire uh, or end our well I'll show you in just a moment before recruitment phase so before you even jump into recruiting before you play any other card or use any abilities you can discard your entire hand skipping your turn and then you draw five additional cards at the end of turn phase okay so the way I purchase that card is I actually play those cards on the board to purchase it and what it's saying is before you even go into that recruitment phase to do that you would have to uh, empty your hand but that would give you 10 cards the next turn now one thing you can do I have not done yet at the end of each turn you can take one of the cards in play and retire them I don't really want to because these are recruits they have a lot of recruitment power I want to keep them around for a little while but that is something that you can do their deck is run out because I do plan on doing that very soon it helps you call your deck so one two three four five let's see what we have here one two three four five six seven must refill that sorry another uplink seven recruitment Ooh, we could get the sky carrier so why not do that let's grab the sky carrier it will help uh, with extra recruiting now what I will do is this time I think I will retire I'm gonna retire one of these old commandos he's gonna retire so what we simply do is I'm gonna make a separate pile so that when I get ready to uh, put them back in the box it'll be easier so we just called our, our, our deck of one of the commandos now they are able to lead so I don't want to do too many of them yet but they only have one recruitment power so make our deck a little bit thinner one two three four five and ooh ambush let's see that one it's pretty cool nine to purchase he does not go recruiting we, we he doesn't show up in the public to recruit but he can buy the leadership and during the tactical phase you can lower venom leaders health and armor by one and gain plus two leadership during the tactical phase if you use that ability that's impressive okay player three so two three four five six seven eight eight purchase power not enough to get ambush we can get an uplink let's go ahead and get an uplink okay that's where we can discard cards and draw one extra card and we're gonna do the same thing we're going to retire one of our commandos just to keep our deck thin and running fresh one two three four five and oops that is it for another round okay so we're going to jump back over here to player one all right I've tried to readjust the camera just a little bit try to get a little more of the hands on the screen and we need to refill the offer predator there we go retire one soldier from your hand to reveal the top card from the recruitment deck if the reveal card is a soldier add it to your hand Wow but if it's a vehicle you retire it Wow that <laughs> that's now of course most of them are soldiers but still that's uh that's scary okay this is done next event oh venom strikes again so we move this up to two now let's see what happens <clears throat> venom captures uplink and powder keg with a new laser core of uplinks design this reward card no longer provides its bonus to players it is still worth victory points for the player who captured it remove all copies of uplink and powder keg from the game once they appear in the training ground 
or in a player's hand and refill or redraw as necessary. That is awful. That is awful because somebody just bought a uplink and a powder keg. And what did that other part mean? Well, as I said earlier, this is the Hydro Master Mark 5.9, and it has a one-time use ability. If we find that uplink la uh, laser, we cannot use its special ability anymore. All right. So uplink is retired. You let's see what does it say. Remove all copies of uplink and powder cake from the game. So he's not just retired. He's out of the game. I'm going to put him way up there because there are some cards that will let you go and uh, search for someone retired and bring them back. We can't do that with that one. And it says, um, once they appear in the training ground or in a player's hand, refill or redraw. So once they appear, I know you're only supposed to refill this at the end of your turn. I'm going to probably hurt myself here and leave this empty because he did not appear. He was already there. If I were to draw it now, of course, <clears throat> but I think there's only two copies of Uplink, so we don't have to worry about that. But unfortunate, very unfortunate. Still, everything is frozen, so he is preventing us from attacking. Two, three, four, five, six. Six will get me a Timber Wolf, but I think before I play these to recruit, I'm going to play the Peacemaker. So. We go to the end of turn phase. We just skip our turn entirely. One, two, three, four, five. Then we refill this. Oh, and there's a pow pow uh, powder keg. So we can just remove him from the game and we get a war maker. It's a vehicle. Looks pretty cool. You can uh, discard a venom support, so that's nice. And then this says draw five additional cards. Well, we only have two, so there's two. Three, four, five. So this player one will have a big turn next turn. Too bad we can't attack. On to player two. One, two, three, six, seven, eight. Hmm. That would not be enough to get the war maker, um, unfortunately. <clears throat> but that will get us Bowser and Pit. So we're going to use the Sky Carrier. Retire one card from your hand to gain twice that card's recruitment power. Okay? And then during the tactical phase, we could get, uh, if we did not use that, we could get bonus attack, but we're not going to attack. So, recruitment phase. Retire one of our players, one of our recruits. So that will give us four recruitment. Four this gives us three, that's seven, eight, nine, ten. And that would give us Bowser and Pit. And I'm going to pause just to double check that I am playing that correctly, that if you play the recruitment uh, ability, you also get to use the influence. And I'm back. All I could find was that it cannot be the leader. So you play this, you get that recruitment, and then I activate the recruitment. So, boom, we got Bowser and Pit. Yes. If he comes up and we'll use him, we'll look at him closer. One, two, three, four, five. So we'll do that. Refill this, and we get Rex. Ooh. Ten to recruit. Leadership of three. There you go, if you want to see that. Pretty cool. Okay. Player three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight. Do I want to risk it and discard some cards? Let's see. Because he would give me two. That would be three for a chance to get a little bit more. Do I want to do that, though? So let's try that. I'm going to... Discard X number of cards from your hand during the recruitment phase, then draw X plus one. But that's during the recruitment phase, so I'm still going to get the two for that. And then I'm going to discard these two commandos that only give me one recruit each. Now I draw one, two, plus one. So I have two, 
four, six, eight, ten, eleven, eleven. I have eleven. I get the war maker. That is amazing. So during the tactical phase, you can discard one of the Venom support cards. Just discard it. And you add plus two to the row value of all your combat dice when the support's in battle. That is amazing. And to get it this early. So Uplink did come in handy then. And as long as I'm playing that correct, you get to use their recruit and their recruitment power, then we're good to go. Boom. All right. 